Hello and welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Hello, welcome to episode 74. We are having a conglomerate episode today. We have a little confetti of things to offer you. We have a couple questions, we have a couple comments, and we have a pro tip for you. So let's get started. Okay, so my pro tip, I was on Amazon this morning and it, you know, on Amazon they show you like everything you've ever bought, like (laughs) just want to buy it again. And I was looking at some of the cleaning supplies I bought recently and someone told me, someone online told me about this rust stain remover. It's called Wink. (laughs) It's a weird name. W-H-I-N-K. With an H. Yeah, Wink. Rust stain remover, right? At first I was like, ah, I don't, you know, like some of these things, they don't really work. But rust is really hard to get off sheets and towels, white sheets and towels. I don't know why it shows up. My theory is it comes from the dryer. We have a clothesline and it might come from there. I don't really know, but little bits of rust show up and I can never get them off. I try soaking it in white vinegar, OxyClean, doesn't matter, won't come out. So this stuff, Wink, it's kind of crazy. Like you'll just, you know, you could get a little spray bottle of it or it has like this little, you can kind of like do little drops of it out of the bottle. It's gone instantly. It's amazing. I'm like, okay, that just saved my sheets or that just saved my towel from being, you know, forever just thrown away. (laughs) Yeah, that's amazing. I feel like rust is one of those conundrums. So I wonder, yeah, how does it do it? Well, it's so funny because on most, if you look up most cleaning blogs or whatever, they're like, use lemon juice, use vinegar, which for a lot of things works. For rust, none of that ever, ever works for me. I've tried forever. and I've used hydrogen peroxide. Doesn't work. I don't know what's in this stuff, but you sprinkle it on and it, for me, it's gone away instantly. And then I do like a rinse cycle in the wash. Like I just throw the sheets in the rinse because I don't know what's on it. I don't know how corrosive it is. So I just rinse it right away. I don't have to, you don't have to rewash it, but just rinse it. So Yeah. So pro tip. Yeah, so that's a pro tip. I'm going to link to it on the um, blog post, too, so you guys can just go get some. I love it. So we have a question from Tim in Florida, and Tim has a unique property. It's almost like a little island inlet. What would you call that? He was calling it uh, a small island on, on a lake. So it's kind of part, it, it almost like, looks like a man-made island, in a development and right he's building properties on there i mean small properties right so he's building two uh tiny houses on the property and we'll link to his instagram account because he's uh tracking his progress on there it looks super cool it looks very interesting and his question was how do you go about letting people know before they book that we'll be on the property ground Um, He says, you know, we enjoy doing projects on the property and we'll be on and off throughout the day as well as having, you know, there are two tiny houses there. So if you're renting one, there's another set of guests there. Um, It looks like they're not quite taking guests at this point. They're still building out the property. But it's a really good question of, you know, how do you communicate there are people around, there are other guests, we're on the property, you know, you don't have this entire little island to yourself. So we thought that would be a a good discussion. I was going to say, you know, just be upfront about it from the very beginning, you know, say it in, you know, within two sentences of your description. Explain, you know, we're on the property or we live on the property or something like, you know, we're often there working on projects I mean, it's tough, right? Because somebody wants to be there probably in a quiet atmosphere. But it's like, 
almost being like friendly and humorous about it. Like, hey, we're there often. There are other guests. It's like a, a fun time, you know, like something like. Yeah, I mean, you can even describe it as like almost a little co community area. I mean, I, I wasn't sure from his email if they lived on the little island in another tiny house or if they lived in the neighborhood. But it sounds like there are going to be two tiny houses, and I'm assuming those are both Airbnbs. Just say it. I mean, you can just say our other pro our other Airbnbs right next door. Uh, if this one's booked, you should check that one out. That's a good <laughs> that's a good opportunity to get people to look at all your properties. And yeah, just be upfront. Like Ashley said, be upfront in your listing and be upfront when you message people when they book. Because there's no way that you can have someone say, oh, we thought we were having a private island. Like, you, and you know what? In, on his Instagram, he shows like a drone shot of the little island. So you got to put that in your listing, especially if you can see like a couple little, you know, houses around it. And you could put a little star that's like, this is the one you're staying in. And this is how close the other tiny house is. I mean, the other plus or the other advantage of having a property like this is two couples who want to go away for the weekend are like, awesome. We get our own little like neighborhood of Airbnbs. I think it's a real advantage to being able to communicate that there are other spaces available, especially for like a multi-family or a multi-friend trip. I think that's really positive. And, you know, we've said this a million times in other episodes I think as long as you're upfront, you're friendly, you know, people just want to know what to expect. And so I think it's always tricky when an Airbnb tries to like hide something or, and I don't mean in a negative way, it's just like they think that'll be more desirable if they don't know there's another Airbnb house. But really, it's like people are looking for those properties too. You know, they, I would love to have a little weekend with, you know, a, another couple of friends and we all have like our own little spaces. I think that's a great idea. So it's like use that to your advantage. Use that as a selling point. Yeah. And the other the other advantage too is the fact that you either live in the neighborhood or you live on the little island. And number one, that means you're available if people have questions or problems. So you're going to be a very good attentive host. And number two, it means People are people want to ask you about those properties because you built those from scratch. That's a very interesting process. I mean, you're documenting it on Instagram and what we do at our houses because we've renovated all three of our properties. We have a before and after book. So you can go on, there's like Vista print or I use, uh, I think it's called blurb.com. It's super easy. You just like grab all your Instagram photos and make a little like hardcover book for like 20 bucks. And so when people get there, they're like, oh my gosh, they built this from scratch. Some people might not even think that that's possible. So it, it's like a conversation starter. I bet they would be, people would be thrilled to talk to you about that stuff. I would, if I was staying there and you're like, yeah, we built these tiny houses from scratch. We designed them ourselves. It's like, that's so cool. What an awesome selling point, you know? So I think as long as you just tell people, I mean, it's it's like Ashley said too, there are people who are looking to just stay in tiny houses or they want to build a tiny house or buy a tiny house and they would love to experience it. So they want to talk to you about it. So I think it's nothing but positive things. Like Ashley said, setting up expectations for anything, any booking that you have, you're going to want to set expectations. And this is a good example of being able to do that. So I think that's great. And I cannot wait to see your tiny house when it's done or both of your tiny houses. I'll be watching you on Instagram. We will link to the Instagram. It's very, very cool project. I can't wait to hear more. Yeah, and keep us posted. We want like progress. How's it going? We want to see how it's going over time. Good luck. Okay, so we have another email um, from Kristen, and Kristen said, my husband and I own long-term rentals and are considering an Airbnb, so we love hearing your advice. Um, we frequently stay in Airbnbs, okay, so they're on the other side of it. Two things jumped out to me in one of your last podcasts that I thought might be helpful for hosts. 
Okay, cool. I love hearing this from the other side. Uh, you mentioned adding your rule book to the listing, and I would highly recommend that. We checked into an Airbnb recently that had a binder of rules and expectations, none of which were mentioned on the listing, which included a checkout process with two to three hours of extensive cleaning. Oh my I, God. I feel like we've heard this story like multiple times. Yes, we have. What are hosts thinking? I have, I have one to add to that, but yes, let's continue. Yeah, so think mopping, vacuuming, wiping down the walls. This was on top of play, paying a cleaning fee. Okay, so let's what? let's jump into it because she has another tip yeah. too. But right, so we've heard this so many times. Actually, we've heard this, and we've stayed in places where they're asking for this. Yes, which is banana town. It's nuts. That's crazy. I mean, look, if you're not charging a cleaning fee and you need your people, which whatever, charge a cleaning fee and either pay a cleaner. Or clean it yourself and get paid for that time. Or put it in your base rate and that's just part of your base rate. Do not ask people to do these things. The one thing we ask people is to turn on the dishwashers. We're like, just put all your dishes in there, turn on the dishwashers, or dishwasher, and so that our cleaners or us can put the dishes away when we get there. And that's so reasonable. That's so reasonable. I mean, I, you know, there have been times where, I mean, so many guests will do things without you even asking, right? Like I've had so many guests take out the garbage, take out the recycling, strip their beds, put it in the laundry for me, which like sometimes is not helpful. <laughs> I've heard before, that with right? stains. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes people think they're being nice and you're like, that's not my system. Cool. Now I have to like redo everything. But I feel like in general, they're trying to help, right? They they're, they know they're leaving someone's house and they want to leave it nice, which I think is a very, like, I'm very deeply appreciative of that, of that as a host. I feel like there are times when I've asked people to take out the garbage on their way out because I live on a third floor walk up. And if it's hot and it's the summertime and I'm not getting back for 24 hours or something... You know, that's just like a kind of helpful thing to do to sort of keep the house feeling uh, clean, you know. So like there are little quirks like that of everybody's situation where you might ask a guest to do something. But I feel like asking guests to legitimately clean before they leave, unless it's a very strange situation, I feel like that's just unreasonable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we've said it over and over again that like, just don't expect people to do that. You can ask them to do little things. Like you said, take the trash out, lock the door, whatever. I mean, we, we stayed in places in Europe, um, in Scandinavia, where you'd be staying in someone's basement apartment. And I swear, every single one of them's like, you got to strip the beds and start the washer. And we were like, okay, I mean, at least they're not like mop the floor and clean the shower. Like they were like, just at least strip the beds and get everything in the washer because I'm at work all day and I'll come home and finish it. And you're like, okay, that's pretty basic. Like that's, that, that's right. just the system over there in a lot of places. I mean, again, if you live on a beach and you're asking people to like sweep, you know, the sand out of the kitchen or something like great. No problem. Like those are, again, like reasonable requests. Right. But I think things above and beyond that are, especially if you're charging a cleaning fee, are just rude. Yeah. And also expect people not to do those things. Like I've had people not start the dishwasher because they forgot because they have three kids and two mm -hmm. dogs and they're, you know, like whatever. And, and my, my cleaner's like, they didn't start the dishwasher. Fine. There's a speed, you know, there's a speed setting so the dishwasher is going to be done by the time she's you know done doing the beds and she can empty it and it's no big deal um you know it's like expect to if you're a cleaner or if you pay cleaners or if you are cleaning expect to do everything that's just part of the business you know it's like a hotel they don't make you clean the room before you leave a hotel and that's what this world is and if you don't like that it's like, don't, don't get into this business or pay someone to do it for you. And that's just 
that's just what it is. Or be one of those rentals like we're reading about right now and people hate it. I do want to add to, I remember reading, I think in this Q&A, that they didn't want to leave a review that said this. And they either private messaged the people or they didn't say anything. And I have to say, I feel like we get messages all the time that people don't want to leave a bad review. But like, that's like bad review worthy, I think. You know, it's like, what are these review systems for if not being honest? Like, there's a difference between giving a host feedback and doing that through a private message and saying like, hey, this wasn't in the Airbnb listing, but then when we arrived, there was like a totally different expectation. You know, like, you can say those things over private message, but I also feel like, you know, maybe that's worth telling other guests about. Right? Like, what is the the point of the reviews is to to comment to other guests or like if there's something really serious, like warning other guests against a property, you know, and although there are a lot of people who don't want to do that for various reasons, like, oh, they were really nice or like, oh, you know, this is their only like rental property or something. And it's like, yes, absolutely. People rent for all sorts of reasons and I'm sure are very nice people, but also like two to three hours worth of cleaning and it's not part of the Airbnb description at all, like, that's not okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you can private message people and say exactly what you said in this email to us where you're like, we were surprised by this. This this seems unreasonable. Um, but you can also say that in your in your review. I mean, look, I, I had some issue with, like, fruit flies at one of our kitchens that we didn't know about Um I I don't know if someone spilled some wine somewhere that we couldn't see, but they were like gathering in the kitchen and the people who stayed were super sweet about it. And they left it in the private message and messaged us like, Hey, we saw some fruit flies and we, we, you know, wiped the counter and stuff, but they just would not go away. And thank God they told us so we could go fix it. And I'm so glad they didn't put that in the public review. Cause you're like, that never happens. That, that was just like a fluke, you know, but If this is how their system is set up where they're like, you know, there's a cleaning fee and we don't mention that you have to do this massive cleaning before you leave, but we expect you to do it. It's like, no, you better warn other people. Because when we, when we were, I'm a, I think, I think this was in Europe. I think because she's in her next message, she mentions uh, being in Portugal. But when we were in Europe the last time, um, we would read reviews of places and the people would be like, oh, they expected us to bring all our own linens and towels. And we're traveling around. We're Americans in Scandinavia and we're, we don't have any of that, you know. So we found out through the reviews we wouldn't, you know, and they're not saying anything. Yes. So you're like, we would have yes, showed up exactly. and they, they would have been like, well, you can sleep on a bare bed with like, you know, no towels <laughs> or they charge, they charge you like 50 bucks a person. It's nuts. So yeah, don't be like that. It's all about expectations. I mean, honestly, if you're expecting people to, to do all the cleaning, you got to say that, right? Like, yeah, I feel like you made a really good point, which is if, if some like, uncommon thing happens at your Airbnb, like fruit flies. That's such a good example. Like it's not structural in either how they're running their Airbnb or the space or the property, right? Like it's not a structural problem. So you private message them, but if it's like structural, if it's built into right. their expectations, if it's built into their pricing, it's their system. If it's built into it's their, their clean. communication, it's a system, <laughs> yeah. it's structural. Right. And so that's I think those things are more review worthy. You know, again, like if it's not clean, that can be pretty review worthy depending on the place, too. Right. You know, if you're like this place is a total dump, like, you know, it's I mean, again, use your judgment. But I feel like people err on not leaving reviews for things that are like kind of deeply structural. And that feels problematic to me. I mean, look, we we always joke around, uh, you know, I read the Reddit boards and I read the Airbnb forums and I feel like Europeans are way more likely to say something and be like, this bathroom was dirty. And, you know, although I haven't really had that experience, thank God. But um, 
I've heard other hosts say that, but I feel like Americans really are like, I didn't want to say anything bad because they were so sweet and it was such a cool location, but it was really dirty. And, you know, like, I feel like we, we, we just feel bad for doing that, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, we're, I think there are a lot of people who are conflict averse, yeah. you know? So yeah. But anyway, what was in the next part of her? Okay, so the next part of uh, Kristen's email was, in terms of check-ins, I liked what you said about implying that someone would be there to meet the guests. We had a host do the opposite in Lisbon, and that was not a great experience. The listing showed it was self-check-in, but on the check-in day, the host messaged us that she was waiting on us to get inside instead of just giving us a code. And, you know, they had planned their day and they were just ready to check in whenever, you know, because it was supposed to be self-check-in. And they said they used a bunch of charges on their international phone plan to, like, coordinate with her. And there wasn't a keypad. And it sounds like they probably, um, you know, had to get keys or something. But so, yeah, I mean... We, we usually try to say we're going to meet people like we've said before, um, and we will if we can, but, you know, lately with three Airbnbs, it's literally impossible. That's mostly to give the expectation that you don't want them to show up with like 100 people, you know? You're like, the people that you said yes. would be here, the amount of dogs you said would be here, uh, you know, we're going to see it. Are here. Right. But we do give them the code the night before. Uh you know, we message them and the day before they come, we're like, okay, here's the code. Check in whenever you want. If you need us, we live nearby. So it's funny. I just checked into a place in Vermont. Um, we, I went to a college reunion and we stayed at this gorgeous old like schoolhouse. I mean, it was just over the top gorgeous. And there were a bunch of us staying there. And two funny things stood out to me that are similar to this. You know, we got the check-in instruction, self-check-in, and it said, you know, there will be a, a key box and here's the code. So we're like, great. So, you know, one of our people in our party messaged the host and said, hey, we're probably going to show up around five. No problem. You know, it's self-check-in. So we didn't have an expectation of being there at any certain time. But when we showed up, there was no key box. And so we were like, eh. so then I called the host and I was like, hey, we're here. It was like 510, you know, and I was like, I don't see a key box. Like, are we in the right place? You know, and he was like, oh, I'm walking over right now. It was like totally no big deal, but it didn't say anywhere in the listing. Like it was sort of like there will be a key box unless I'm meeting you. But he never said he was meeting us. Also, it turned out he lived behind the Airbnb. And so it was the kind of thing where I was like, just say that stuff. Just say it. Just be like, if you arrive and there's no key box, give me a call. I live next door, you know? And then it's like, great, he lives next door, you know? So it's just funny, those things, right? Like, just say it. It doesn't have to be weird. Don't make it weird. <laughs> don't make it mysterious. Right. It's For me, I don't understand, like, um, why you have to make it confusing for people. I mean... It's not like people live in your town and they're like, oh, I'll just like find you down the street. It's like they're traveling here from different countries, different cities. They could have been traveling all day. They have kids. They have dogs. They have parents. You know, it's just like the 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 more info they can have to just be like, we're getting there at this time. We can check in at this time. This is the door code. And if we need anything, this is the host phone number for text or or phone calls that's it and also like if there are multiple people in a party so you know we were all of the people in our party were on the airbnb app right like you can you can um invite your friends who are part of the right rental to be on the airbnb yeah which is awesome which is all well and good but but you just have to assume that not everybody's looked at it not everyone's in, you know, we were all, I was just meeting a few of the people for the first time. Right. You know what I mean? Like communication is all over the right. friggin' map. So I feel like as a host, just assume people haven't read it thoroughly. Just assume they're going to be late. Just assume that something isn't going to go as planned, you know? And so I just had no idea. I didn't know he was going to meet us. And so like this person is saying, 
you know, she had no idea that this person was going to be waiting for her, which means as a host, just like you were saying, Ryan, with the last question, it's like, tell people in the post, tell people in a message, tell people in a yep. second message, like, hey, I'm going to be there to meet you, yep. you know? It sort of sounds to me like they didn't understand what self-check-in <laughs> meant. Or they did understand what it meant, and they falsely advertised anyways, you know? And that's a bummer. Why would you do that? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the more information you can give people to make them feel... And I'm like that, too. I mean, I will literally go on Google Maps and do Street View just so I know, like, where I'm supposed to park or where I'm supposed to, like, get off the train and walk to the place. Because I, I don't want to... Because, look, we went to... I feel so fancy. We went to Copenhagen and um, we were in Copenhagen. I forget, you know, we're jet lagged. Um, we had just flown from like Iceland and it's pouring rain and we're walking from the train station to our, our Airbnb. We have SIM cards and I still like I hadn't fully prepared for it. And it was a nightmare where you're just like, what street is this? Oh, the streets sound the same and the numbers are weird. I've never been to this country before. I've never been to this city before. I'm pretty sure I can figure it out because people speak English. But, you know, it's like anything you can do. We we were picking up the key. I remember this. This is like classic. We were picking up the key from the dive bar downstairs. Like they're like, Meet, you're going to meet Sven, and he has the key to the apartment. I'm like, really? That does not make me feel very safe. Oh, <laughs> like, my how many copies God. do they I have? I kind of love pub? that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> from a movie. I, lo- yeah. I love so, that. So, like, you know, that she... But again, like, some people could be totally yeah. into that, and other c- people could be like, this I mean, is they're a like, the pub's open till, like, four in the morning, so it doesn't really matter when you get here, so just go get the key from the pub. <laughs> You're like, okay. Oh, my God. Cool. I kind of love that. That's so funny. <laughs> well, can I tell you another funny detail about this Airbnb? So, um, the town that we were in only allows for two cars at a property, which we did not realize. We actually didn't even know until the day before because I read the listing thoroughly because I'm a Good. nerd like that. No, I, you're I not. never do. <laughs> it's so funny, but I read the listing thoroughly and it said, you can, okay, this place, by the way, sleeps like 10 people and you can only park two cars there. And it said, if you park more than two cars here, we can evict you. It use, they use that word, too. And I was like, this is really insane. But the hilarious part is they didn't give any parking alternatives on their listing. So we had to message the Airbnb host and be like, if we can't park other cars here, like, what are our options? And they were like, oh, you have to park at the, like, Walmart parking lot down the road. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, this could have been a total deal breaker if we had like read this prior. It turned out being fine because, you know, it was like everything turned out okay. But that's a really significant thing to uh, communicate to guests. So again, if you have a quirky thing about your property, you have to tell people up front, not just in your post, not just in your rules, but you have to message people and make sure they understand there's a weird parking situation or whatever your quirk you is. You gotta pick up the key from Sven at the pub. Um, <laughs> it's like, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so that parking situation is funny because if it sleeps 10 people, I mean, you have the potential of literally 10 cars, like 10 friends coming from all different places, right? And for them not to mention that, you're like, great, we're all getting here at the same time, you know, on a Sunday night or whatever. I mean, that's so weird to me that people don't mention that stuff. It was a super, in my opinion, it was a super oversight of the host. Like, I really enjoyed my stay there. They had all of the right things. I couldn't complain about the property at all. But I felt like parking was kind of a situation. Right. And the only reason it worked out for us is we were going to a college reunion and campus was like two seconds away and we just parked, you know, three of our cars on campus. It was like no big deal. But I mean, 
that might have not been the situation at all. You know, if you have a property that sleeps 10 people and you can only park two cars, like that's a major drawback. Right. I mean, that's something to know ahead of time. I mean, I, I'm assuming they didn't want to mention it because then people will be like, I'm not booking this place. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But it, I think it would have behooved them to say in a message, you know, maybe it's two weeks before, hey, we're looking forward to your stay. I don't know if you saw this in our, you know, whatever, our listing, but we do have a parking situation. And by the way, here's the solution, you know, but instead it was like, we had to seek it out. We had to ask about it. You know, it's like, you can't have a property that big and assume there are only going to be two cars there. It's just like bananas. And what's funny, like somebody messaged us uh, this morning um, who was coming in like, you know, 20 minutes and they were like, oh, do you have a... We have a washer at one of our uh, rentals, but we don't have a dryer. And they were like, oh, we were wondering if you have a dryer. And it's so funny because it's totally listed. Like, it's very explicit that we don't have a dryer. But it's it's just another... And we just had to be like, no, we don't. But there's a laundromat in town. Or you can line dry it. Or we have, like, one of those, like, folding racks that you can, like, you know, dry stuff in, in the house. You know, people just don't read the listings. I mean, Jay reads the listings. You read the listing. Um, eventually, if Jay... Look, if Jay was not around, I would be reading the listing. But I'm like, someone else is going to do that. But so that's why... So I feel like that's the theme of this podcast is like, you need to be explicit about information. Yes. Reiterate things. Reiterate things. Like you said, put it in your listing. Put it in your binder People could show up and still not realize it until they see it on a piece of paper in front of them. Oh, uh, I need to, you know, whatever. Checkouts at noon, checks at whatever, you know. Parking is only for two cars. We didn't know that. We have cars parked up and down the street. We're about to get evicted. (laughs) Yeah, I thought that was strong language. (laughs) Maybe, yeah. I thought it was strong language for not giving a solution in the listing. (laughs) You know, I was like, hello, that's like serious. I don't want to be evicted. Well, it's also strong language for not telling you in the lit, not telling you at at all, right? Like, when was he going to tell you that? Yeah, it was in the house rules, but not everyone reads those. Right, exactly, exactly. So I do have one other thing that I wanted to mention really quickly. Um, I go on the Reddit forums, the Airbnb Reddit forums, And sometimes there's really good questions. There's a lot of people like bitching back and forth about like, I was a guest and it was horrible and I'm a host and these people are horrible. Like there's a lot of that. But there was a good one that I that I've experienced and I wonder if you've experienced this too, where they said, you know, I'm a new host. My listing just went up a day ago and a guest wants to visit the apartment before renting. Now, they specifically said it was before renting long term, probably 30 or more days. Um, But I have had that happen for people who just want to rent for a weekend, where they're like, hey, you know, we're visiting wedding venues in the area and we want to come or we live not that far away and we're having a wedding in your county or town. And we wanted to come look at the place before. So I, I I don't know if you've ever had that happen. I've heard of many hosts have that happen. And I don't know. And on Reddit, people were like, what is the scam? Like, is this a scam? Like, what would the scam be that they meet you and then like they pay you in cash? Like, I don't understand like what the what the idea is. Other than maybe, like, if it's not a scam, other than people just wanting to be like, this place is junky, I don't want to stay here. But at the same time, you're like, I have extensive photos and descriptions of my property. And reviews. And, well, we have reviews. Now, this person was new, so they were like, we just, you know, our listing just went up. So I think that the person in the comment was kind of like, you know, I'm desperate to get stuff booked right away yeah. and I have no reviews. Like, is this a scam or not? Well, I would be right. really interested to hear from our listeners if anybody's experienced this. Um, right. I ha- I mean, I, the closest thing I've ever had is people wanting to uh, rent long term and basically not pay my Airbnb fees. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, but that's different. That's different. Well, it's 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 interesting because I mean, my advice for something like this is just to say no. I mean, people do this on lots of online things like eBay. People want to come to my house and look at the item before they buy it, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> I mean. You know, I live far away from most of the country, but there are people that are close enough that are like, oh, I live 45 minutes away. Can I come look at this? And I'm like, no, (laughs) you know, like everything's online. Any question you have, you can ask me, you know? Yeah. So this is, I would love to throw this out to listeners and just see if anybody's noticed this or experienced this. Is it a scam? Is it something that you've heard of? Yeah. Send us your comments at shampoo and booze at gmail.com. And that's it. Everybody put tons of information in your listings, put tons of information in your messages, more information than Ryan's going to read. That's for certain. But (laughs) most people are going to read. But it's okay. Ashley will, Ashley and Jay will read it. (laughs) It's all good. Thank God you guys are here. Someone's going to read it. Someone will read it. Okay. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session.